Hey guys, it's ADW, and today I'm going to be doing something a little different, and I think I might as well start this off by giving a little anecdote, and that is that uh, back when I first started doing redstone, pretty much the only thing that I knew how to build was uh, this really basic combination lock that I learned off of the YouTube uh, channel, and uh, at the time, uh, of what really sparked my imagination was I really wanted to make a lock that was a lot better than this one. And I wanted to really just end up with something that was a lot cooler. And recently I was thinking about this and I was like, you know, if we were to do it like something like this, then that would really accomplish everything that I've got. So what I've got here is I've got a uh, combination lock that really lives up to... Uh, the potential of uh, making a really, uh, well, I guess, uh, secretive uh, vault to store stuff in. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just plug in our combination. Uh, you notice that I had to press a button there, and we're through. Perfect. So now there's another little puzzle, and this puzzle here is actually just to filter out people who might not uh, know how that little anvil bug works. And so it's a nice deterrent if they, uh, like, get lucky or get your combination right. But uh, we're going to be talking about uh, that in a second. So let's come back out here and woo. So we got through. But the thing is that if I press the button again, you'll notice that the code along the top changes. And now, even though I have the same uh, combination that I used last time, the door doesn't open. And the reason for that is that the uh, new combination has actually been randomized. And now I need to work out what it is. Fortunately, I happen to know that it's that. Now, uh, the system of uh, doing this is basically designed to be very practical for someone who knows the puzzle. And it's also supposed to be, uh, even if someone does know the puzzle and is invading, it's designed to be really hard for them to figure out what's going on. So. Without any further ado, let's talk about the exact puzzle that we've got going on here. Alright, so I actually decided that rather than going through and actually explaining how the whole thing over there works, uh, I thought it would probably be a lot simpler to just jump into things, because honestly the redstone behind it is very simple if you have experience in digital redstone. Uh, of course, uh, coming into this, I don't necessarily want people to need to have experience with that, but uh, honestly it's going to help you a lot. So, what we're going to do is basically, uh, actually I should explain what we're doing first. So on, along here we have two inputs. We have one input that we can edit using a bunch of levers, and then another input which we're going to create randomly using a random number generator that we're going to build later. Now the way that we're going to determine uh, what whether or not we can get through, is we're going to take these numbers and we're going to add them together and we're going to compare them to a number that we already have uh, saved. So, for example, if I was to put a binary 5 in and I was to get, like, say, a random uh, 1 and the number that I was trying to get in total was 6, then the door would open. So that's basically how we're going to uh, go about this. So naturally, what we're going to do is we're just going to build a simple ladder. Uh, now, I'm actually going to be using a design I don't think I've shown before on my channel, uh, but it's basically just a design that uh, uses Tommy's XNOR and uh, uses instant carry logic. Uh, now, I think I might as well take this opportunity to talk about uh, what is you should probably do if uh, you don't have experience with digital redstone. Uh, because this is pretty much just a very simple digital redstone concept, and if you don't, uh, then you should probably learn what's going on. So, literally all you need to know coming into this is how an adder works. Now, uh, if there's a whole bunch, I have uh, my own tutorials on this on YouTube, but uh, <laughs> at the time I really wasn't as experienced as I should like with redstone, and so in my personal opinion, they're pretty bad. So uh, if you do want to learn something like this, I will uh, put a link to uh, probably some other video that I can find that does, I think does a good explanation of uh, how to do this. 
Uh, and I'm starting to blank on uh, how I build this. <laughs> it's actually been a little while since I built this design. Oh yes, okay, it's starting to come back to me. So don't we have, uh, that comes up like that, and then that's like that, right? Yes, and then that goes down like that, that's like that. Okay, I think I'm, okay, I think I'm starting to get it. Okay, yeah, I got it. So that's like that. Uh, that's like that. And we're almost done already, because uh, it's a fairly simple adder design. All we're going to need to do is stack this. And if you're not using World Edit, don't worry. Uh, it's a lot harder, but uh, it's definitely doable. I'm actually uh, building stuff in a way that's going to make it so that it's very easy for me to stack this using World Edit. So. Uh, Keep that in mind if you're not using World Edit. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to start building the uh, bit before it, and I'm going to do that. And then I'm just going to uh, get rid of this, and I'm going to stack this into the segments that we're going to need. Actually, I should probably build the part up here first. Uh, and this feels wrong. Hmm. Well, if it's, there is something wrong, then I'll be able to fix it later. But let's go ahead and, no, I should uh, go down a few more blocks down to there. First position and second position up here. And then we can stack seven. And of course we need to fix all of this. Uh, oh yeah, that's what I did wrong. What I need to do is I need to bring this up like this. Uh, hmm. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and break all of these blocks because I believe they need to go one block further forward. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I didn't break that. That's why that's not working. And then I'll, okay, so I messed that up a little badly. And then we're going to go like a little pattern, uh, probably something like this. So we go down. And then for this one, we're going to go up. And we're going to put that down like that. And then we're going to go down. And then we can just go up. And so then we're going to do that. And then we're going to do that and like that. And then we can do that and that. And then we just need to do that, that, and that, and that. And there we go, there's our full adder. And as you can see, it's taking, uh, wait a minute, it looks like it's taking the five I put in and it's giving me a six for some reason. Oh yeah, that's obvious, that's just because I still have this torch here. So as soon as we get rid of that, and please tell me I didn't break anything. Okay, I don't think I did. Now we should have our fully functional adder, so let's do some basic adding. Uh, let's put, uh, so, the two test things we're going to want to do are 5 and 3. So let's put that there and that there. So 5 plus 3 should be 8. And it's not, clearly. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and debug this. Uh, hmm. And again, you can use any adder design you want. Oh, maybe it has something to do with... Oh, dear. It looks like our... Oh, no. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and debug this, be right back. Alright, looks like I just accidentally broke something. <laughs> but anyways, I've tested it now and everything is working just fine. Uh, we got uh, our answers of 12 and uh, 8, which are the ones that we wanted when we add 11 and 1 and 5 and 3. So that means that everything here is working just fine. So let's go ahead and now move on to uh, the part that you might not uh, know if you're more experienced with digital redstone, and that is the actual uh, building of the random number generator. Uh, now, the random number generator that I'm actually going to be using is one designed by Newmaster, I believe. Why do I keep adding a tick onto my repeaters? <laughs> so let's just bring all this up. And then we can talk about uh, what we're going to be doing in this random number generator. Now, uh, I'm going to need to grab a comparator and a dispenser and a hopper. So there's my hopper, there's my comparator. Uh, I'm not going to need a slab, and then I need a dispenser. 
Uh, actually, I think I need a dropper. Uh, probably not going to need a water world edit wand, so let's go ahead and do that. So the way that this is going to work is I'm going to just take a uh, comparator out of this. And uh, actually, I think I'm going to move this one block up so that we're less likely to interfere with stuff. We can move it one block down later if we need to. And then what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to place a dropper like that, and I'm going to place a hopper on top of it. And I'm going to do that for everything here. So now I need my world edit wand. Brilliant. <laughs> Let's take that down to... I think I can actually just stack the... Uh, whole thing. So if we select that down to there and we just stack three. Oh, <laughs> I need to expand one. And then we can stack three. Yep. Okay, perfect. So uh, let's look at that. Everything appears to be in order so we can keep going. Now, the way that this random number generator works is that we're going to send a signal into each of these droppers. And in all of these droppers, we're going to have, uh, let's go ahead and go into combat. Oh dear, this isn't going to work. Actually, I can just chuck stuff. We're going to put an arrow and a bow into each hopper. Now, what this is going to make it do is that when we apply a redstone signal to this, it's going to dispense either the arrow or the bow. And that it's, that's going to be determined randomly. So... If it is going to be the bow that is uh, sent in like this, it's going to have a stronger signal strength when it goes through the comparator. And so it's going to reach all the way down to this repeater, and it's going to power the actual uh, circuit. But let's see if I get uh, off on the first try. No, I don't. So let's try that again. And now we've got an off state. So now, as you can see, the arrow is in the dispenser. And by the way, the reason that the arrow doesn't fall is that we're applying the redstone signal to the dropper block. And that dropper block is applying the redstone signal to the hopper because it's next to it. So now it makes it so that because there's a signal on in the hopper, it's not actually going to uh, send a signal. Uh, well, it's not going to take this item and put it back in there until we stop applying the signal, which makes it so that it's very convenient because uh, we can just flip all these on and then we'll get a random number and then we can flip them off and they'll all go back to zero. All right, so sorry about that, I got interrupted, uh, but now that we've explained how that works, all we need to do is we just need to do that, stack seven, and ta-da, everything should be in order, so now just put a repeater here, we can get our first random numbers. And, oh, never mind, I forgot that uh, we need to put a bow and uh, arrow in every single one of these, and not put our second world out of position to there accidentally. <laughs> okay. Okay, I was no equipping, I was just wondering about that, so we're gonna throw a bow and an arrow in. Bow and arrow. Bow and arrow. Arrow and bow. Oh no! <laughs> Alright then. There we go. So again, arrow and bow. And good, it picks them up that time. Arrow and bow. And finally, arrow and bow. So now we should actually get some random numbers. So let's just do that and let's see what we got. So it looks like we've got a 2, 4, 8, 16, so uh, six, 22 is what our first random number is. And now we can just turn that off, and we can turn it on again. And now we got a much bigger number, uh, not actually sure what that, actually that's 128 plus 2, 4, 8, so that's a total of 6 plus 8 is 14, plus 128 is, I think, yeah, 142. Alright, so this is just going to automatically now, whenever we ask for it, it's going to generate a random number between 1 and 200, sorry, 0 and 255. And this is output here is going to give our result of our adding that to that. Uh, so what we need to do now is we just need to find out, is this value out here equal to, <coughs> sorry, is that our value out here equal to, whatever uh, value we're going to assign. Because what we're, the way that this works is that now that we've added these, we're going to compare it to a certain value. And if it's equal to that value, 
Uh, and by the way, we can customize this uh, value if we want to like uh, switch around all of the possible uh, combinations. Uh, if it's equal to that value, then we're going to say, okay, then we're going to need to open the door over here. And we should probably go ahead and actually uh, build some walls for this. I know there's like a world edit walls command, but I'm lazy. I just like to use that. Oh, let's do that then. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. And then uh, we can do that and that. And there's our roof. Uh, we can put some redstone lamps in here probably. Uh, so let's put one of them halfway through. Turn them on. Oh no! <laughs> Didn't mean to fall there. Uh, turn you on. So now we need to need like halfway so that's like there. Right? Ooh, that's there's two blocks that are halfway, so I'm going to put it slightly closer to the middle, like that. Uh, of course, we could expand it. Actually, yeah, I think I'm going to... No, I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it like that. So then we can just put that there, and we can put that there. And if we wanted to put some symmetry on the ceiling, then we could just do that. And that and that. Now we just need to put these up here. I'm sorry, I just want to make some decoration for this. <laughs> uh, naturally, if you're building this in survival, uh, then you'd probably, uh, first of all, this is one of my only builds that's probably going to actually be practical in survival, and second of all, you're probably going to want to build this underground somewhere, so that you don't have to place all these blocks by yourself. Anyway, so now let's go ahead and uh, look at this output here. So what we need to do is we're going to need to uh, determine whether or not uh, this is equal to uh, the actual output that we're getting from our, uh, what's it called? Well, not output, but just the value that we've assigned that we're trying to get. So like uh, if I was to uh, assign this and we get this number, whatever it is, and then I'm just going to add one to it. And let's say that the number that we're looking for is whatever the result of this is. Then what I would need to do is I need to take my output of the addition problem and I'm going to need to compare it. Now the way that you compare stuff, uh, if you don't know, again, if you're kind of new, uh, by the way, if you still haven't watched the video on adders, you probably should because there is no way you're going to be able to decode this if you don't know how an adder works. I'm sorry. Uh, that's not my fault, but anyways. So, uh, the way we're going to compare these is we're going to use another XNOR gate. So, uh, all we need to do like this is... Uh, literally all we need to do now is uh, just build another XNOR gate. And the reason is that uh, XNOR and XNOR... Uh, sorry, XNOR and XOR uh, actually tell us uh, the result is one of the ways that you can determine, uh, define the result of an XOR operation is that it'll tell you uh, whether or not, uh, well, in an XNOR gate, it's going to be uh, on if uh, both of the, I should probably do it like this, it's going to be on if the result is uh, the same as, um, if both of your inputs are the same, and it's going to be different if both of your inputs are different. So, uh, using that, we can really easily just for each bit see if it's equal to what we got as the result of our addition. So, let's just go ahead and select this. So, let's do that and select that up to here. And we just need to stack it uh, seven times, right? Yep, seven. And now you'll see on the two bits that aren't zero, because now what we're inputting is all zeros, these two are off. So, uh, now what we need to do is we need to say, well, if all of these are on, meaning that every single bit is equal to uh, what it's supposed to be, then we should uh, say, give a individual signal that we can just wire directly up to our door. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to, uh, let me think, what am I going to do? Is it an AND or an AND gate? Uh, I think that, yeah, it's a... AND gate. So 
what we're going to do is we're just going to put a whole bunch of torches here so that we're inverting the entire signal and then we're going to or them all together and now uh, if all of these because uh, if every single one of these is uh, on then when we invert it all of them are going to be off so that uh, like let's just say that these were zero now all of them are going to be off and so now if we invert this it's going to give us our result so that's finally uh, all of our uh, calculations have given us this one wire. So this we are going to be able to hook directly up to uh, the what's it called actual door out here and there's actually a bit of extra logic that we can do to make sure that uh, this is a bit more secure. Uh, so I'll be showing that off next uh, but first of all let's just fill this in like so and then we can just get our door uh, installed right here. Uh, we're going to want an iron door. Uh, let me through. Iron door. There we go. All right. So now we just need to come around like uh, around here, and now we can just take this signal right here, and we can just say uh, that um, with this signal, uh, if we did get a result of yes, the door can open, then we're just going to uh, open this door. So all we need to do for that is we just need to take this signal right here and plug it in over there, which is going to be a bit complicated. So I'm going to cut and I'll see you guys in a second. Alright, so as you can see, I have gone ahead and just hooked this up. Now we need to get to uh, the final security measures. Uh, these are ways to make this uh, vault extra secure. Uh, they're not going to make it any less practical for us, and they're just going to be real, really efficient deterrents for people who are going to come in here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add an outer door. Now the way that this outer door is going to work is that basically uh, we're going to make it so that uh, while someone is in here, um, they cannot uh, access the outside world. So that means that uh, if we come in here, all we need to do is add a door like that. Uh, actually, I'm going to put it out like that. And now, uh, we, what we're going to do is we're going to take this right here, and we're going to just say, all right, so using this signal, we can make it so that uh, we can prevent access to the outside world. Now the reason we want to prevent this is that we want to make sure that uh, whenever we can access our vault, there is no way that anyone can sneak in uh, behind us. And also we want to make it so that, uh, and this is where an extra bit of security comes in, uh, if someone does get into the vault, they have to, by like luck, they have to go through the entire process all over again of finding a new uh, piece of data that's going to allow them to get through. So that is going to make it so that, uh, like, that's going to make it so that they can, like, uh, probably are only going to, if they do get in, only get, like, one full inventory of stuff out of our vault. So uh, that's why we're going to have that outer door. Now, the logic behind the outer door is very simple. What we're going to do is we're just going to take a button from right about here. So let's grab a button. And now what we need to do is we're just going, are going to need to take this button and we're going to assign it to a T flip-flop. Uh, and what design should I use? Sure, I'll use this one. Now the reason we're assigning this to a T flip-flop is that uh, this T flip-flop is going to allow us to, uh, how could I call it? Uh, hmm. Let me think about this. Uh, oh, I f of course I need a monostable <laughs> for this T-flip-flop design. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this out like this, and then I'm going to turn a corner like this with a piston. Uh, we don't need to place any more doors. And then uh, we're going to put a repeater on there, and then we're going to invert that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hook it up to a, uh, what's it called, uh, an actual T flip-flop design like this. So now when we flip it, what we should get 
is this T flip flop should uh, switch states. So let's see. And that's too short, so let's do that again. Yep. If we press it again, it's off. So now we can, uh, we've basically determined two states which we can switch by pressing this button. Now in one of these states, it's going to be where this outer door is open. And in the other one, it's going to be where it's closed. Now in the closed state, that is when we are actually trying out a combination. So we're going to have a, uh, some information displayed up here, or a random number that we have to add in order to get entry through here. And then also, that's going to be the only state in which we're going to allow uh, a signal to pass from the input there all the way through here. So the way that we're going to make sure that this happens is very simple. First of all, we're going to take this signal right here, and I'm actually going to take it uh, down a bit. Uh, hmm, how could I do this? Hmm. hmm, I think I'm actually going to just take this whole T flip-flop and I'm going to move it out one block so that I have a bit more space to work with. And then I'm just going to take this down like this. Uh, and I'm going to basically uh, say that... Uh, hmm. No, this isn't going to work. Oh, no, what I need to do is I need to uh, use a comparator to make it so that uh, in the uh, on state of this T flip flop. So if we press this button, now this door is locked. So even though we are getting a true output uh, for our result, we cannot actually access this door because we're in the off state. So then the other thing we're going to want to do with this state is we're going to want to uh, go ahead and just take another signal from it. Uh, and we're going to go underneath uh, all of the redstone over here. And we're going to drag it over to this thing right here. So that's going to say uh, when this is on, then our outer door is going to be open. And uh, we're going to be secluded from the outside world inside of the thing. So now we just need to lay down a bit of redstone all along here. Probably going to need a repeater right about now. Uh, probably not going to use a, need to use an extra distance repeater like that. And now our, we're open to the whole world. And if we press this button, that door is going to close. And this one's going to open because we have the right combination in. Now, of course, uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to make it so that... Uh, when we do have uh, this uh, in this particular state, which we have it in right now, which is off. So when we have it off, we're going to want to be outputting our random number to the top up here. So I'm going to get rid of this lever, which was giving us our previous random number. And I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to drag it on up like this. Uh, so this is where we need to get it to. So I'm going to go ahead, take that one block down, uh, do like that, do like that, and do like that, and paste, paste, and I'm already at the right height. Okay. So now we can just bring that out like that, put some redstone on, and the signal should reach, right? Let's press this again. Yep, it reaches. So now that actually should be, in theory, the entire thing working. So uh, let's see. Wait a minute, I need to invert this signal. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace this up here with a torch. And that should make everything work just fine now. Uh, hopefully no more delays. So let's come in here. So now we're in our off state. Uh, I'm going to close this up. And now I'm going to go into our on state. Uh, actually, what I should do is I should change the uh, total combination. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it five. Pretty simple number. You, again, you can put whatever you want in. And now, uh, if we come back in here, we have this random number. And what we need to do is we're going to need to uh, add a certain number to it that makes it so that it is equal to five. Now, if you've uh, 
watched an edition video, which again, I have recommended that I have like required that you should do this, so you should probably know by now how edition in Redstone works. Am I right? All right, my computer had a low battery. I can just close that quickly. Anyway, uh, I can deal with that in a moment because I'm almost done recording. So if you know how to add, then you should know that these two numbers together give us five. But the problem is that we've got numbers passed here that we need to get rid of. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to generate a carry like that. And we're going to uh, make it so that it carries out. So that's effectively going to eliminate all of these. Uh, so again, what you do when you uh, have bits past this that are not equal to what you have, you're going to just basically create a carry like you have here, which you have by having two on and then make sure that uh, you have alternating uh, on and off. So like if this is on, this is going to be off, and if this is off, then this, then this is going to be on from the way out. Uh, you should understand why that's the big deal if you uh, have watched I uh, what's it called, edition video. But again, if you haven't watched an edition video, you probably still shouldn't be watching this. Uh, and then after this, again, you can do the uh, anvil lock. That's an extra security measure that I like to include. But other than that, that is pretty much all of the redstone for today. So uh, just to demonstrate one more time, new combination, not going to work. So yeah, uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed. And I will actually, I can really easily make this uh, open this. So ta-da. Anyway, so that's it. I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time.